All right, bro. So first of all, thank you for pulling up to the downtown studio in the office space. Uh, how you doing? Thanks for having me, bro. Everything's good, man. I'm there excited. Uh, I told you I wanted to create content with you for a long yeah. time. You've been, you've been creating content too, which yeah. has been dope to see. Um, before we go any further, can you introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, bro. My name's Alec. Obviously, we've met like seven years ago. Long time. Um, even before um, barbering. Yeah. I knew you from the um, bar the basketball community. I knew about Grizzlies, even Grizzlies, bro, <laughs> way back. But yeah, I knew you from basketball and then basketball didn't work out for me. Obviously, I'm Filipino. <laughs> 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 so the next best thing there was was barbering. I found a love for barbering, became a barber. Um, ended up opening up my own shop at 20 years old and then um, opened my second location. But this one's a whole new concept, obviously. Yep. I think um, it's starting to get that traction now. More people are knowing about it um, just because it's so unique. It's the first ever like barbershop car wash here in Canada. Yeah, I actually wanted to focus more on this. So I let go of my other location. So I'm 100% focused on this now. It's brand new, building up. I almost had to build from scratch again. So yeah, here at 24 years old, barbershop owner. It's called Drive-In Barbershop. And um, yeah. Before we go any further, because you told me this story, which I didn't even know about, but you apparently tried out mm -hmm. for Grizzlies. And, yeah. And we cut you, I think, right? Bro, I made it. Oh, you made it? I made it you to made U17 it. Selects. Yeah. But... Um, <laughs> Being an immigrant family, oh right, I showed I showed that you know, oh you made it, congratulations. Yeah. Here's the fee. My parents looked at it and said, "Oh, that's cool, good job." But um, how are you gonna pay for that? <laughs> like, there's no like, funds for that. The bro. responsibility was to for me. Like it wasn't like they looked at it like, why are you showing this to us? <laughs> so obviously, um, high level sports isn't cheap. So. Anyone playing for any team right now should be grateful that, you know, their their parents or sometimes you guys take care of it, right? Depending, yeah. on, the Depending on the athlete. Yeah. So, yeah, just be grateful for that opportunity. Absolutely. I didn't have that. No, it's, it's cool that we were connected so long ago. And honestly, yeah. the Grizzly stuff I didn't remember. I just remember you from the barber side. Yeah. How do you first get into it? Mm -hmm. So, I kind of discovered it accidentally because for the same reason I couldn't play basketball. I couldn't get haircuts. I was broke too. So me and my friend, you know, our hairs are getting long. His dad had like an extra pair of clippers. Me and him went on YouTube, searched up how to, you know, cut our own hair. We went straight to the fade, bro. None of them number twos, really? none of them number threes. We said, we're going right for the skin fades. It looks cool. It looks hard. So yeah, we do it the first time, the worst haircut. My guy's head looked like staircase, bro. <laughs> so it was fun though. Like... I, I fell in love with it. I think the second, third haircut um, that I did, I already told myself, I'm a barber. Like, that's when you kind of, um, that's when you self-identify yourself. That's when, that's right. when you know, okay, this is it. This is the real thing. So, yeah. At, at, at what point in the journey did you, like, understand that, like, you were, like, nice at this? Oh, man. Not till, like, 20th haircut. That's years. still early though, isn't it? Yeah, it is early. Um, now that I'm starting to like teach people, I'm like, I'm kind of realizing, damn, I learned this shit quick. <laughs> These guys are taking forever, dude. Yeah. It's like their hundredth haircut. I'm like, yo, what's going on, man? <laughs> but uh, I've always just been like a quick learner with any sport too. Like I, I um, got into golf. Next thing you know, I already got nice form and everything. Uh, I'm, I'm obviously still lucky. I'm not lucky that I'm in a rich family and all this, but I got lucky in my skills. I learned quick right. in barbering that came to a, you know, that gave me a really good advantage. So 28th haircut, that's when I knew, okay, I'm kind of nice. <laughs> my Instagram, I was looking at other barbers. I'm like, damn, this barber has been cutting for this long. My haircut's already like the same. So yeah, 28th. That's, cra that's crazy, bro. And obviously like most barbers, same way I, I first met Julius, Jules and stuff like yeah. that too. Like you guys all start in your house. I think that's how yeah. every barber starts. Do you remember like how many cuts you did in your house before you transitioned mm -hmm. into a shop? So my first barber shop was actually Alex Barbershop. You know this? The, the north side one. Yeah, 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 north side one. All the way in Castle Downs, even Nav. You were living what? Like Millwoods or something? I was living in Millwoods at that time and I would drive that's 30 like, minutes. Too. Yeah. So 
that was my first ever barbershop that I worked at um, just because I was getting a haircut from Jules. And then I was cutting in my house from March of that. No, it was, it might've been like half a year before I even got to the barbershop. Obviously, so just half a year. Yeah. Some people might take longer than that, but for me, yeah. it was half a year until I, um, just because Jules was going on vacation. That was the only reason why we got hired. Jules was going on really? vacation. The owner, Alex, was like, bro, there's a bunch of Filipino clients <laughs> that are going to be looking. <laughs> <laughs> so he had to hire two Filipino barbers, me and Blue. Yeah, just for Jules' clients. And Blue's another one that's also... He's Filipino too. And he's he's been he's, with you guys. So he's at Compound, isn't he? Yeah. And he's also from the basement. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so uh, house to the Northside Barbershop, Alex yeah. Barbershop. From there is, is the jump to Compound and starting your own or is so, there in between? I was actually um, hybrid. So I was cutting at Alex Barbershop, but that's Northside. I had to take care of some clients that were closer to my house. So I was four days at the barbershop, three days at home, and then until we opened Compound, and then I was full-time at Compound. Okay, and so walk me through Compound. So actually walk me through this first. Mm -hmm, yeah. The idea and concept of going from just being, a, I would just say a normal entrepreneur guy mm -hmm. in his house. You get this opportunity to, you, uh, to get a job at the barbershop. Yeah. I'm assuming during that time, that's when you got your license and did the school yeah, and everything. Yeah. So what makes, how do you make the jump from your house and that to let's start like a dope barbershop with compound? So obviously the barbershops are like totally different than the basement because in the basement, people reach out to you. Like they know what they're getting, you know? Oh, this is a beginner guy in the basement. Can't <laughs> expect too much. Right. In the barbershop, it's a legit business. They go in there thinking, Oh yeah, I'm gonna get a real barber, you know. Obviously, it's scary. Um, that's where I learned a lot. Was from my first barbershop. Walk-ins come to and start lining up in my basement. I, I didn't really have no like walk-ins. That's, that's when I developed my speed too. So imagine you're doing hair, and there's four other guys waiting. It's like, oh, you know, I gotta, you gotta go, go faster. Yeah, I gotta go faster. Yeah. So, you know, in the basement, I did a lot of fades, but at the barbershop, there's just different haircuts that I, I've never done before. I had to kind of just fake it till I made it. <laughs> they asked me, bro, you know how to do this? You're not going to say like, no. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to say no. You have to lie a little bit. I said, yeah, bro. And then you kind of just figure it out as you go. But yeah, from there, obviously, um, barbering was kind of early in Edmonton. There wasn't Definitely. a lot of barbershops yet. Every barber's dream is to open a barbershop. But at the same time, for me and Jules, it just made sense. There's no space for, you know, hype barbers like this new gen barbers to cut at. So we just said, yo, it's going to be us. It's going to have to be us. It just made sense. We opened it and um, created that space. So something, I, well, obviously Compound is, is a beautiful yeah. space. Where did the inf inspiration from that come from? Um, Jules really wanted it to be all black. Okay. And then we just went from there. Literally all black walls, black chairs. And then we got the gold logo. Yeah. It all started with the logo. After you make the logo, everything kind of just has to model again, like around the logo. So we got the logo made. This girl named Narissa made it. It's just like um, Jules Klein's friend. Okay. So from yeah. there, we modeled the whole vision around the logo. Um, obviously, with black everything, you're going to have to make, make that place super bright. That's where we got the triangle lights. Yeah, th those are so dope. Yeah. And then the plants too. So we didn't hire no like, Interior designer, bro. It was just you guys. We, we said, um, piece by piece, we said, this should we buy this or not? Uh, let's try it. But <laughs> <We, laughs> you can see a bunch of like random holes on the walls. Obviously, we could have, you know, had a faster route to having that design. But it was a lot of trial and error. Oh, this this doesn't make sense there anymore. We'll take it out. It took a minute to actually have that. You yeah, know, definitely. Proper I mean, that, that's the best way to learn too, right? Mm -hmm. I remember when you guys put in the... I don't know if it's N64 or GameCube, but I remember you guys were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you guys kept adding stuff and it yeah. kept becoming a doper spot to be at. Yeah. Um, the question I have is like, is you guys go and open your first barbershop, you know, together? I think both of you guys are together, right? Yeah. Like it was his first barbershop too. Like, yeah. what were like the biggest challenges you faced Ooh. in doing that? Yeah. So we literally didn't know anything about business at all. We all, <laughs> we both knew how to cut hair, but that's about it. Um, we got lucky, you know, Literally, there's a need for people to cut hair at, like barbers. They were kind of just cutting at random barbershops. Right. So there's a big demand for, oh, we needed space to cut at. 
So we got lucky with that because with barbers come clients too. So right off the bat, we had like six barbers and everyone had clients. We didn't have to learn how to get clients um, because each barber already came with one. Right. That's important. Yeah. But like with the accounting, finance, financial reports and all that, we didn't, we didn't do any of that. So we were kind of just going with the flow with just like two bosses, two barbers that owned the business. We were just cutting hair in there. Like, oh, we'd recruit some guys, but there's no systems, no nothing. So we learned quick to learn the financials, have some reports, um, the marketing, the website stuff. We didn't know anything about that either. So I don't know. We kind of just figured out each step as we went, bro. Yeah. We had no plans. It's, it's honestly the best way sometimes, yeah. man. It's we just, just like opened it. Entrepreneurs, just like, yo, let's just dug it out yeah. and, and learn as we go. What you guys did, because obviously like, we'll get to it later. Now you have your yeah. second shop, right? Mm -hmm. As you guys are building out the barber shop, people, I'm, I'm assuming hella people hitting you guys up. Yo, I want to cut there, whatever. I want to help you with this, that, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. What's the process like in, in picking those barbers to come? Ooh. Is there like an examination? Is there a process? It's just like, yo, you can dap me up and, <laughs> you know what I mean? You're just a cool guy, like, yeah, yeah. pull up. Yeah. So at first we didn't have any of that, like uh, an actual system for it because um we got to know each barber first um we tell them to shadow first we don't okay. hire them right away like yo come you're hired this and that um we tell them to shadow first the whole point of them shadowing is to get to know them um you know right. how they are as a person are they welcoming are they like are they weird <laughs> that was that was kind of like the filter do we find them weird do we find them cool do they fit the vibe that's that was all we asked and if they fit the vibe, we, we try them out. And then if it doesn't work out, we just let them go. Right. That's it, about it. Is it hard in a barbershop to maintain uh, quality? Like, for example, mm. you know how people become attached yeah. to barbers, right? Like I'm coming to you because I know yeah, what yeah, I'm getting. Yeah. Um, but if you had, and you have a couple of barbers in your shop now, but let's say you had seven, eight, and you weren't there. You know, for me, I'd be like, okay, I don't actually know who to go to unless you recommend. Oh, yeah. So how do you like maintain the quality amongst other barbers in your, because it's, I guess, your brand and your shop? Yeah. So in the beginning at Compound, we had no training checklist. There was no onboarding. <laughs> right, right. You were just kind of expected <laughs> to be good. You know, the shadowing, <laughs> the shadowing phase, I guess, was like that training. They just watch. Yeah. But there was no like actual checklist. Okay. Can you do this properly yet? Can you do this properly yet? Um, obviously there's different price range like a compound there was like you know cheaper more experienced you know right um you kind of just get what you get what you pay for um but now that's what i'm building up that's what i learned from the first shop is when i hire someone what is the minimum um kind of skill set they need to have so that i can trust them and right. leave them alone um it's all about the consultation it's all about the um, communication still because a lot of clients, their main problem isn't that, oh, yeah, they couldn't do this properly. It's that they, the barber didn't even ask what they wanted in the first place. It's so simple. You're right. Just basic stuff. Just basic stuff. Like, we don't have to be that that good to to kind of beat other barbershops already. Yeah. Just a matter of asking them what they want. Speaking of other barbershops, right? Is competition like, a, I'm assuming competition, in any industry it's big. But how is competition like in, in Edmonton with barbershops like? Do you actually look at that? Are you thinking about that? Or are you just trying to, you know, like I said, do what you do, stay in your lane and kind of, you know, create your own path? At first, I didn't think about competitions. But now with like my second shop, I'm actually thinking about reverse engineering. What do clients actually want? You know, there's different markets. I didn't think about different markets. You know, some some people, because we're getting more walk-ins now, some people don't care about the haircut, right? They just exactly. want the hair cut. That's it. Like they don't care how good it is. They just need it off. They just need it off. So different competitions have different pricing. Obviously, we'll give them that convenience factor of, oh, you get a car wash too. So we're still trying to target that that very um, narrow market of like, oh, people that, that like convenience. So yeah, we're still trying to find what market we're trying to target more. Okay. But um, yeah, different, different barbershops are competition. Most of them are just cheap, cheap and quick. Right. Let's try to fill the gap of like, we'll actually listen to what they want. We'll actually, you know, offer convenience with shoe cleaning. <laughs> like you dropped off your shoe. Yeah, man. Shoe uh, cleaning. I just want to say like that stuff, even just a simple thing, like it sounds maybe silly, but offering yeah. a water bottle. Oh yeah. Man. It's just like a basic, <laughs> it's like a basic courtesy. Like half the time I say no, but it's like, okay, I was thirsty this one time. I take it. Yeah. 
I've never actually had a barbershop offer me anything yep. other than that. Sneaker cleanups is pickup is, is cool. Um, the foosball table, the ice cream, the yellow ice cream. Oh, yeah, There's yeah. so many things. There's video games, <laughs> yep. right? It's like, I feel like even from the compound days, even when I used to go to like you got Jewel's house or whatever, yeah, yeah. it was like the experience. It's like there's like dope music in, in the background. There's like yeah. cool people there. And it's more so like we're building a relationship as opposed to like, yo, give me 40 bucks and get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Which is kind of how it could feel in some other barbershops, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, I, I think that's huge. And one more thing on the whole compound before we start moving oh, yeah. on from that. Compound was, I think, it was a couple of years, whatever the amount of years it was. Yeah. Um, is there, how many was it? Do you know off top? Three. Three and a half. Three and a half. Yeah. So in those three and a half years, what's the biggest setback you guys faced? If, um, if you can name one. Biggest setback is definitely the initial setup. We didn't, we didn't know like the bigger, the bigger goal. Like what are our values? What do we stand for? Right. That's why all these businesses, gurus, you know, like the biggest like businesses, they all have their why first. So we didn't have the why and um, that's what's going to stick everyone together. So I think, I think, yeah, that's the biggest thing. It's like, what is our why? So for the next businesses, w- what are we trying to accomplish? What's the biggest, what's the bigger goal? Right. That's what's going to line up every every single uh, team member in there so that it, there's longevity. Every every morning, are you guys having like um, like a morning meeting? No, no. Okay. Yeah. To kind of just- every morning and then once a week, we have a longer meeting. Okay. That's like top 1% of companies do it. Why aren't? Why aren't we doing it? So it's a simple myself. thing, right? Yeah. Keep the, keep the team together, build that chemistry. Mm-hmm. Um, in those meetings, what have you found? Like as a, as a as a business owner, what have you found from bringing all those people in to talk about them over the last few months or years? You've done it. Like, what's the biggest takeaway? Yeah. So the daily meetings just remind everybody, you know, the mission. You know, keep everyone on the same page because that's that's kind of like the thing that happened was. Um, everyone's just doing their own thing. They're kind of just floating. It, there was no, there was no like sense of teamwork. So right. once we're we're um, catching up on each other, what everyone's doing, not even just business wise, like personal too, right? We keep up with each other, and that's how the the culture and how how everyone feels, like the team members, the employees. You know, it it goes towards the customers too, right? Exactly. And customers can feel that. So yeah, it's still fresh. It's still four months in. And we're going to have way more systems soon too, because um, there's a new book that just came out, $100 million leads. I'm trying to implement, I'm trying to implement every single thing on there yeah. and be better. Um, right now, I'm still aware that, you know, it could be better, could be way better. And just little by little every day, it's proven to work. It's just a matter of how well can we, can we actually implement it? Yeah. So let's talk about Alex real quick. Cause I think Alex Ramos is one of your biggest, yeah. maybe inspirations. Mm-hmm. I also just saw, I think it was yesterday, the day before he had this crazy live stream. Oh man. Like half a million people came to it. I saw the millions of dollars he made. I just like, I saw someone do a Twitter thread breakdown. Oh shit. Uh, just on the genius of that, of that, which we knew, but the genius of what he did in just in that live stream of the pre-event, the thing that with the, the giveaways, the books, there was like, there were so many things he was doing, dude. It was crazy. Yeah. So were you part of the yeah. live stream? I was. I was okay. there. I saw the whole thing, the breakdown, the the advertising, everything. So uh, first of all, one of the things I love about you is that you're always like following these guys, and you're tr- mm-hmm. you're actually trying to actively learn and, yeah. and get ahead, which a lot of people just aren't doing. I think you know that already too. Why is he someone you're you're following, looking up to buying his book? Like, why does he have that impact on you? Well. He built his wealth through like like his first money through um, opening gyms, yeah. brick and mortar. Not a lot of people actually built up a brick and mortar. And I've heard someone say this, one of the business guys. They were like, oh, I, I tried different businesses, but brick and mortar is the hardest business to scale. So he's been there, done that. He's he's literally got everything that I, that I want. So I look at the person, what they got, and is that something I want? If I say yes... Obviously, just just learn what they did. Right. It's just a matter of time. So he's just teaching people how to like scale their online education now, and eventually, that's that's what I want to be doing. Like, oh, you want to open a shop? I got you. Right. Like, have um, almost like a, like like a one on one type course consultation Take you from start to finish of how to open a barbershop. Yeah, consulting. Okay, that, that's good. That, that's like a natural way for you for you to scale and like yeah. you've already been doing. I think educational content yeah. and stuff in the past, right? So you have that like you know you have those juices kind of flowing, kind of ready to yeah. to take it to the next level once you're ready. Okay, that's really good. So with the barbering side a little bit, uh, I always ask barbers when I meet them this like there's obviously I'm assuming a hundred different ways to do a fade. 
Oh yeah. Right. I kind of, everyone, I think I've seen people do so many different ways also, like it's just whatever works for you. Right. Mm. At what point in your career do you think, or maybe you already have like, can you master mm. a fade? Like, can it just become a thing where it's like, it's second nature in terms of how you're doing it? Yeah. Um, I think I'm at that point already. And, um, I can literally just experiment with, with a thousand different methods. It will still end up the same way. Um, it's just a matter of the hair texture, the different um, ways the hair is laying down, um, how thick the hair is. There's a method for everything. So it's all about experience still, right? Right. Like I probably have cut, I don't know, 10,000 hair. Which is, which <laughs> like, is what, crazy 10, to think hours. about. Because <laughs> um, I was doing like 100 cuts a week for years. Sheesh. So how many weeks has it been? We'll see. So a lot. lot but, <laughs> but yeah, I can literally just not even think about the fade and it'll, it'll turn out pretty good but yeah that's when that's when you can get comfortable though that's where it's dangerous right right you know the the clients might think oh you're you're kind of like shortcutting it now you know this and that but i'm still constantly going to these barber events literally next sunday i'm going to a barber event in, in winnipeg i'm competing in a fast fade competition that's sick see that's all i was gonna ask you is how you're elevating because i figured you don't want to get stale yeah so you're you're still going to the competition because i remember at Compound, you guys used to have some trophies and stuff. Yeah. Like you'd pull up to these events. A lot of them were mine, bro. Yeah, see? So that's I won sick. like four different competitions. Like they're fun and all. Like I don't I don't like make my career out of around the like, competitions. Right. I still think to be a good barber, you need to have clients. <laughs> like it's not about how you know, I'm the best barber, this and that. Let's let's talk about first of all, I love that you're still doing that. you yeah. like literally, bro, like it's so important that you continue to reinvest in it and build yourself up. Yeah. We talked about the customer side a little bit, how important it is to have customer service experience, water bottles, small things you're doing in the shop, yep. right? What strategies are you actually employing to like hold these customers long-term? Like keep, I already know in your phone, you probably have hundreds of loyal customers that have just oh, been yeah. years and years, mm -hmm. but like how? Like mm -hmm. what, what are the key things that allowed you to do that? Yeah, so with that book actually, <laughs> that new book okay. that just came out, um, he talks about the different systems so that it's almost automated right now i can tell you how but it's so much work right 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 now i'm trying to break it down to simplify simplify everything obviously you know when a client comes in how do we make them come back with different automations email mar email marketing text messaging everything like that we're actually s switching to a different software we're trying to switch to that next week um, I'm, you're going to have to download a different app now. We're going to have our own app and everything. Like you just, you just have to reverse engineer your clients. There's hidden problems in each service you give. Oh, it's not just about the haircut, the drive there, you know, the booking, like how to book. Yep. There's the small things can prevent someone from actually going to 100%. you. 100%. Right? Yeah. Like for us, there's parking right up front. They don't have to find parking. You know, that's like one of the biggest things. Like if, if I were to book a barber on White Ave, Oh no! Just thinking about that is like it's a headache. Just yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Um, One of the things I actually love that you're doing, and th I'm happy you said it already, was yeah. like just like the text and yeah. the email marketing, like the small things of like. And I think you mentioned. I don't know if you we can say mind body or yeah, mind okay, body. So you're moving to mind body, which I'm a yeah. huge fan. of. I've been using it for years. Oh, yeah. So many people just because of fitness boutiques, yeah. everyone uses it. Yeah. But the fact that you're now integrating with them, and I know they have no. so many tools built in marketing tools, post, post purchase, mm -hmm. SMS, all that stuff. Right. For me. And I know some people will think opposite. Some people actually don't like that. Yeah. I love the fact that if I can go, first of all, just book simply or book ahead and schedule. And then it's, I'm getting the text reminders Yeah, in case I forgot or it's, or it's sinking <laughs> to my calendar. Yeah. Like, bro, those are so, such important. The small things add up, bro. Yeah. And like customer like me, like I'm paying a premium mm -hmm. for a haircut for that type of stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I, I that's the thing I love and respect. Outside of those tools, you kind of mentioned, oh, we talked about mind body. Is there anything else you're trying to implement that would change, that's not maybe email, not SMS, but anything else that's maybe new? Yeah, uh, membership, recurring appointments. So okay. we'll, f we'll find, we'll find, you know, oh, there's a routine when you come, bro. Is Does this time work for you every time? If it does, why don't we just pre-book it so that, you know, sometimes clients like to be last minute about it. And the next thing you know, it's fully booked, bro. Right. As a beginner barber, you're actually like, you have an advantage. You're always available. <laughs> so that's a big that's advantage, true. especially for last minute clients, recurring membership. You, you had talked about this idea with me. Um, yeah. 
again, these are just things I like. Yeah. But mem- I, I love memberships, right? And you kind of mentioned you're playing with this idea of maybe having an all inclusive membership. Yeah. Maybe it's, it's basically just whatever. It's unlimited cuts. Technically, no one's going to get 100 yeah. cuts. <laughs> it's unlimited cuts. Maybe car washes are thrown in. Maybe another service of sneakers are thrown yeah. in. Yeah. Is that still a bundle you're trying to build? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm still trying to build those things because. People like, bro, in and out. Just the paying part is already wasting time, bro. Yeah. Sometimes it, our machine takes long. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's one of the biggest factors why we want to switch to mind body. It's like, bro, our machine's so slow. Why is it taking so long? Right. Like, I, that gives me anxiety, bro. Like, I respect so, like, people's time so much that I need them to get out of here, bro. <laughs> that's <laughs> not, true, that, though. Not because I'm rushing it. No. It's just it's because, like, because you just know. So, like, so with, with mind body, for example, mm-hmm. Uh, will it be like uh, I'll, I'll hop in the app book and pay right there, right? Yeah, we like so everything's already processed before you come in, type yeah, thing. Yeah. So then, how do you handle like tip? Are there is there an option? There in should there? be. An, there should okay, be so an like option. they have that built in already. Okay. Yeah. Because obviously that's a bit. That's a big. Yeah. <laughs> you know, big part of the service industry, right? Is like mm-hmm. being able to do that with the customers. Yeah. For me, I love automation. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to when you're going to have hopefully one day like, uh, yeah. like that monthly package. Oh. I think I think many people would actually be mm-hmm. because like I said, I'm just going to pay you. We don't have to talk about money. Yeah, bro. For, for just for you know, say that month, and then I just come in, and I yeah, know it's, I know it's charged or whatever. I just gotta schedule it, like, because mm-hmm. that's how the fitness boutiques work, right? You pay the monthly, yeah. True. And now I'm just pressing plus on. I'm coming Tuesday at six. Or I'm coming, and yeah. it's like a nice process, bro. It's all about how smooth can you get it, you know? Yeah. Hermosi talks about that a lot, so it's it shows that I'm, I'm you know the person I'm learning from. I'm, it's just a matter of implementing it, right? That's the biggest thing, right? How many people? I mean, you, you probably know a lot of people too, right? They, they hear these things, they read these books, yeah. they see these videos, but like, it's like the 1% that are executing it. Yeah. Right. And it's just like, you know, I mean, that's, that's part of the game, right? Talked about some apps, some mind body, things like that. Obviously the future of technology continues to change. Oh, with AI. Day. Dude, they have <laughs> AI. So, so okay, that's what we're asking. getting so many inquiries on, you know, Facebook or website, everything. Right. And we're, we can't be working 24 seven replying to everybody, right. especially like how much for this vehicle? With MindBody, they have an AI messaging where they can reply to them automatically and the simple questions, they can answer. See, that's important. That's you you could probably build in other uh, replies and questions, I would assume, right, for basic stuff. Yeah. But, that, bro, like, yeah. I was going to ask you, right? Like, <laughs> so with AI, that's one way you're going to utilize AI. Is yeah. there any other th- ways or things you've been thinking about that could implement it into your shop? That's one way for, like, already leads coming in. But um, to get... To get new customers, literally strangers, to find out about us, we're gonna do like um, cold outreach. You know, somehow have automation reach out to like a thousand people, offering them. I'm thinking maybe I'll give everybody a free car wash. Imagine if I can just click of a button, yeah, yeah. send that to like a million people in Edmonton. It's like yeah. a lot of people take that offer up. Yeah, free car wash, bro. Yeah, that's way more expensive than a haircut. <laughs> yeah. you know, me, that, that's way more. That's, yeah. like, that's a good idea too. Yeah. Let's go into the actual new barbershop driving. Okay. Barbershop, okay. Uh, we talked about everything in the past, talked about some AI and stuff like that. So with the new barbershop, let's talk about the concept first. Cause it's like I said, it's unique. Yeah. We touched on it earlier. There's a basically a car wash built in. How did, how did this come about? So I drive uh, at my old shop. I'm just sitting there cutting my client. I'm like, Bro, everyone's cars are literally just outside. There would be no added like there's no added like work for for them to just get yeah, their car washed. Here. It's already there, just sitting there, dirty. If I can wash it, that's just extra money in my pocket. Like there's no added anything. But yeah, that's literally how I came up with it. I thought of putting a car wash in the back of compound. There's like a little really? garage. Okay. There's not a garage, like um parking, but as you know, it's in a rough neighborhood. That back part is literally where the homeless shelter is. Compound's in a tough neighborhood. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, to have it there, all the homeless people would probably come into the gate yeah, and I shit. Know. It just wouldn't work out. And I wasn't even looking for a space with a garage when I first um, was looking for driving. He wasn't even going to be driving. I was going to call it the game barbershop. Okay, so what, what was that concept? Uh, the game? Yeah, like is there a, a I was just gonna. I was just going to call it the game barbershop because... Um, Alex, Alex says this a lot. I don't do it for the extra strategy. I don't do it, you know, to eventually sell the business. I'm just doing it for the love of the game. Oh, you know, okay, to be right. to be in the game, like to be in business, because the business is the game. Yeah. So the game barbershop would just that's the the meaning behind it. But obviously, the name is very important. <laughs> if I just call it the game barbershop now, it wouldn't say, oh, it's a it's a wouldn't be the same. Yeah, yeah. So I've been just like, oh, you. So you stumble. You basically stumbled upon this building. Yeah, and then 
you know, first I clicked the ad of this building. I said, oh, this is expensive. There's a garage. I'm like, okay, click away. And then I was like, wait a minute. I had this idea years ago. Barbershop car wash. Fuck it. How hard could it be? <laughs> this is still the first, for, this is still year one, isn't it? Or am I wrong about Literally that? Literally like four months, bro. Yeah, it's just, you just opened it April up. April 1st. This, this, yeah, this, this yeah. spring it opened up. Let's talk about the business a little bit to whatever we, we can talk about. First of all, just trying to give context to anyone trying to open a barbershop. Obviously, the first thing you're doing is probably leasing the building. Yeah. So you're going in, you're you're finding a lease, a lease that makes sense for you. Yeah. Finding a rent that's affordable to in, in your business sense. How are you taking, we don't even know the, the amount you're paying for rent, but how do you take that, that number and then extrapolate that or understand, okay, like this is how many cuts I need. This is, you know, all the expenses and back end and the profit you need to kind of balance that. Um, the first four months, we've been just kind of going with the flow. Um, I hired someone to, to literally be, be um, in charge of all of that. Okay. How much are we spending? How much? That's the most important thing that I've learned so far in businesses. You need to know your numbers. As much as oh, you know, it's a passion, this and that. A business still got to make money. We're just finishing up the reports. Obviously, I know the bigger number of just oh, how much is in my account? It's it's not growing as much as I want it to be. But for first for the first four months, that's not bad. To break even, that, that's solid. Months, that's solid. Yeah, that's really good. Plus, um, like I said, plus you added a new business of a car wash. Like yeah. to me, the car wash is also like a separate business. Yeah. So you're you're not an expert. Yeah. You're learning. You're, you're learning that side, right? <laughs> <I'm> learning. <everything. laughs> Dude, it's crazy, bro. And some problems come up left and right. You know, what's what's the biggest problem so far in the first four months? So, I've never even actually talked about this, but I hired a guy to manage that side, so I literally don't have to do anything about detailing i just okay. sent clients that way but um it ended up being not worth it at all i was paying a lot for this person and we couldn't afford him bro we would we literally would have uh, went bankrupt if, really if, to handle the detail side yeah the cause, car, okay because i don't know like we had a bunch of detailers ready we didn't have enough cars for them to actually do so i either have to like pretty much get rid of the whole team or just get rid of the guy oh that, dang. yeah yeah of so course. i was like Bro, one or f one person to four people, you know? Yeah. It's like he's seen detailing as a long-term thing before too, but he found other things that he want to pursue instead. Okay. So I was like, you know, I don't want to hold him back. I don't want to hold him to detailing if that's not something he wants to do long-term. Right. It would have been worth it if it was like, okay, we can build one shop and build another shop. And then, you know, and you, just, you continue yeah, to scale. And it's the same guy. You don't have to eventually find a new person, but. It wasn't like a long term thing. On the car wash side of the barbershop, do you know the economics of that? Like, for example, like how much does a car wash cost? Yeah. yeah. I, if I pull up, I just need a car wash. Um, I don't know if that's like just water and soap or like not soap, but you know what I mean? Like the basics. Yeah. Is there a cost? I did that? I did a rough estimation. Um, it's in my laptop somewhere, but I did like the utilities plus yeah. like the labor yeah. and the soap, the water and everything. Yeah, I found out the number and it really depends because we have the barbershop, right? That's right. where we can profit and vice versa. That's why it's taking so long to actually find out the numbers. Like, damn, you know, did we profit off that client? He got a car wash, not a haircut. You know, this guy got a haircut, not a car wash. Right. So there's so much logistics. It's just, it's just like a game you're playing. Yeah. Okay, so let me see if you can answer it. Instead of saying numbers, percentage-wise. So if someone comes in for a haircut uh, versus someone comes in for a car wash. Yeah. You know there's going to be profit, I would assume. Yeah. Is there like a, like a 50%, is there like a percentage margin that you're making mm. based on what you know from barber to car wash? So the first four months has been literally trial and error. Okay. If we get someone in for a car wash, how likely are they going to get a, car, a haircut? So far, we've tried everything. My goal for the whole um, detail side is just literally break even, bro. Okay. So I get them in, we'll profit off the long term and haircuts. Right. Um, so far, that side is not profitable at all. The car wash. That's side. like my my lead loss. Like, yeah, I'm but it's but money. it's bringing eyeballs and people in, right? So you're just betting on that yeah. side. Yeah. Okay. And then maybe if you implement the memberships eventually, yes. Maybe you're exactly. hoping that can more people get the haircuts, and then eventually, how do we make it so that every it's like a no brainer? Yo, you get yeah. a car wash because everyone's when they go to um a touchless, not touchless. When they go to a car wash and do it themselves, they still spend like ten, twelve dollars minimum. 10, I think. Minimum, yeah. yeah. And they have to do it themselves. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how much value is in a touchless, not a touchless, like a hand wash that's, that's probably going to be better than how you do it. Yeah. 
with the rims and details and everything while you're getting haircut. There's no added time yeah. to. There's no time. That's the biggest yeah. thing, right? Yeah. You're not wasting any time. Yeah. Okay, so that's interesting. It's very valuable. Like I think it's like we charge like um, forty with the rims, twenty five just for the bo- for the body for the paint. Okay. I think anyone can justify that, but I think I'm gonna make it even like no, no brainer. If you're a loyal client, like let's that's why the membership's coming out. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. What about okay? Like the economics of a barbershop have always interested me, yeah. um, in terms of hiring barbers. So first of all, I guess if you hire a barber for anyone who's trying to do this and doesn't know, yeah, how do you hi- hire hire barber? Is it a commission thing? Is it an hourly thing? Is, are they getting paid a salary? Yeah. So the goal is to have everyone on rental, okay, so that they can just pay me and the shop um, just like a flat fee, and then they keep the rest. But right now, obviously, there's only two barbers in there. And if I did that model right now, the shop would go bankrupt. <laughs> so they understand Actually. the vision. Um, the two barbers in there, they know eventually that's that's the route we want to take. So the goal is to make the shop busy first so we can just hire any barber and have that barber busy as well. We can easily hire barbers with clientele already right now. But it's like my my biggest fear is like we have systems in place. We're trying to create a professional um environment right how coachable is that barber going to be really so we're taking the slow route of building us three and then be busy enough to hire another one that's coachable got you i don't know it's going to be hard to bring in someone that's coachable with the full clientele and why would they come there instead right yeah absolutely that makes sense you have to have like benefits or perks like some, some, reason. some like really good incentive be- yeah right barber comes in um they're paying x amount per month to rent that chair from you. Is there situations where that barber like doesn't even get enough cuts? Well, right now it's all commission. So okay. you only make how many for how many people you cut. It's usually oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Each barbershop is 50 50. Like that's how everyone starts here in Edmonton, especially, but cities like Winnipeg, stuff like that, where there's so many barbers and it doesn't make sense for them to do commission. They all do chair rentals, but yeah, I'm, I'm making a tier system where, okay, if you're making, if you're doing this many cuts, you don't just dis- like, it doesn't make sense for us to take 50%. You sh- you deserve more. Got you, got is you. it your clientele? Okay. Is the driving, you know, is the business driving in the clients? I'm making that tier system so that from 50, 50, 55, 45, 60, 40, next thing that you know, makes sense. They're, they're getting new people in and they deserve rental. So, so yeah. It's basically scalable, which is good. Like yeah. they, can, they can keep going up and like yeah. earn more money in their pocket, which is yeah. really all that matters. That's the vision. That's the vision. Yeah, that's all that matters, right? Yeah. So you're four months in. Where do you see this a year from now? So next April, like what would you like to see from this barbershop? Um, right now, I still need to be there. So I'm building the systems. Right. Using that book. Literally came out like a few days ago. <laughs> it. Bro, it's literally a to-do list of like how to build a business. So I'm going to create different uh, systems. So anyone and everyone that kind of onboards to the team will know exactly how to just run it. And yeah. okay, almost like a well-oiled machine. Obviously, mm-hmm. I'll still, you know, do, I'll still be there because I like being there. But for the most part, I don't want to be cutting hair. I'll only do it. Like to the people, to like you guys, the OGs you know. or something. Yeah, yeah. The OGs. So the a year from now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to to be at that point. Okay, but definitely way more barbers, maybe three or four more barbers a year from now. So goal for you, whether one, let's say one to five years, somewhere in that time frame, is to take more of a step back from actually cutting. Yeah, all day you still can cut some people here and there. Yeah, but maybe f- more focus on scaling business, maybe building yeah. out other other shops, things like that. Yeah, or the or the educational side as well, right? Yeah. And the membership, I can just, you know, look at it and be like, oh, we have this many members. Why isn't it growing? Right. You know? So, yeah. So that's good. It's, it's more. So what excites you more than is it the bar? Uh, is it the barber or is it the business? Business. Yeah. The business, business side, right? The end goal is to just teach people how to build businesses in general, like, like barbershop. There's nobody like kind of teaching that. Right. Like the route for each barber is to literally open a shop, but like nobody's nobody's teaching the right way. Why do you think so no one's teaching that? Because the nobody knows. Out there? <laughs> nobody right. knows how to do it. Right. But yeah, now with Hermosi, probably it's not even just barbering. Any business can be so scalable. And right. Dude, he he just put the he put the the standards up. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, he's, and it's all free. He's putting the blueprint out there, basically, for everyone. If you want to take advantage of, you can. Yeah. Right. That's essentially what it is, right? You got yeah. the book and now you can take it if you want it yeah. and run with it. 
that that's good so he's giving you that foundation what about other stuff so not other stuff but other other goals yeah in, in, in your career as a barber is the goal now to maybe create multiple let's say over the next 10 years to have multiple different styles of shops maybe unique experiences um that again just allow you to kind of keep building your name and keep being able to kind of build this course to teach mm -hmm. other people so yeah i've come to like this dilemma where it's like oh i can teach barbershop owners how to you know open their own shop but i have such a unique shop i can't prove to them that i can i can build like a regular shop because i have a car wash i have the shoe cleaning it's like damn do i just keep opening different drive-ins interesting or do i open like a regular shop scale that up and then teach people how to do that i still think there's benefits to both driving it could just be mine yeah and there's a benefit i can just teach people how, how do you find the drive-in location in your city how do you scale that up i think that's going to be a more valuable problem a more valuable thing i can i can sell because they'll feel like oh it's it's automatic you yeah. know it's so unique it, it's automatic that it's going to do well at the same time there's way more like oh overhead you know, you need to fucking get a car wash. Person. It's way more different, yeah. It's different, but I don't know which route yet. I think if driving can just sustain my lifestyle, I'll have different options. Okay. So um, just on on the content side, just to switch it up a little bit. Obviously, you understand content's king. Oh, yeah. you follow Alex Gary. You follow all the main dudes like creating yeah. like high level content, right? But also, I've noticed in the last couple of years, being on TikTok and everything else, there's a ton of barbers making content. Oh, yeah. And there's like a wide range in my opinion. There's some, there's like Vic the Barber who like goes on the side yeah. of the street. Does That's pretty cool. And there's just classic guys like tutorials, this and that. Where do you find yourself? Like where would you slot yourself in for like content in the barbering world? I, I had like an online course and I was trying to target different barbers because I was already barbershop owner. Right. I already knew how to build up my own clientele doing a hundred cuts a week. But then as I raised my price, I lose a lot of clients and I, I was cutting less. So... I went from like 30 hours a week of cutting, which was fully booked, and to like 60 hours now. Now I could use way more clients again, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went from targeting barbers to targeting clients in my locally. So those are two different types of content, right? Right. But I think I'm still like trying to find that niche, that where, type of content that could, that could like target everybody at the same time. Oh, he's from Edmonton. I'm going to go to him. Right. 100%. Um, I had a few clients that came from, from my content recently. They seen my content and they were surprised. Oh, damn, it's in Edmonton. I guess it really? targeted them. They were like, damn, it looks so cool. I thought it would be in the US or something, you know, with the drive-in. That's dope. It starts with your target, obviously. And yep. what, what do you want your, your um, audience to do? For me now, it's like to come to my shop because I could use more clients now again with perms. As That's why you <laughs> see the perms, yeah. you know. Um, I did them. I did them in hair school. I did like fifty of them in hair school. I was nice and fast at rolling and everything, but when I was cutting thirty hours a week, I didn't. I didn't see the need to do perms because I would. Let's say I charge forty. No, I charge forty five, and I could do two haircuts in an hour. I was still making like ninety bucks an hour. A perm takes like two hours, and it's only like a hundred. Yeah, that's way. So I'm like, yeah. that's not worth my time. Now sixty hours. Like I'm already, I'm only booked like 50% of the time now. Perms can fill that up can easy, bro. And I can do haircuts in between too. Right. So, so yeah, I started with free perms again to, to get the, to get the practice back and to, to learn how each different texture, right. Like how it reacts to the perm. But yeah, now I'm getting like fucking 10, 15 That's perms. Crazy. Obviously it's free cause I'm still learning at the same time. If they want it ASAP, they don't want to be on the wait list. They paid like there's a guy that offered it the other day. Yeah, I that makes perm. sense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's good though, bro. Yeah. And again, that's just like it's just content. Content gave you that, right? You put yeah. some, some videos out, yo, free perm text or you know DM or come in. Yeah. And it just like it seems like it's it's picking up. Yeah. And, it's, it's, and the people that are doing the perms, those are new clients. Anyone, bro? No, but I have, oh, oh, I have a bunch oh, of them. Oh, so new. many. Yeah, so all there you go. Most so of them, yeah. So right away, you're you know getting new people to see the shop and come in, which is yeah. which is great for you. What's been the most rewarding aspect? for you on this journey if you can name one if there's multiple that's great yeah so i hired like a mentor we do like monthly calls okay this was beginning of the year and we listed down like different goals you know i was so caught up in you know scaling up the business you know day to day working six days seven days a week i didn't realize you know how far i've came so yeah we looked at it at the list i've hit the goals even more throughout you know four or five months so 
so yeah looking looking back at the goals and actually accomplishing them sometimes most most entrepreneurs don't do that right don't do that bro so yeah it, it those, always takes someone things. else to yeah, make you bro. realize yeah bro. you know and that's but that's why it's good to have those people in your life right? yeah so even just i look back to to beginning of the year and then if even if i look back to like five years it's like damn can't believe I would have had that, you know. Crazy, right? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. always crazy to look back. How how old are you right now? Twenty four. So it's crazy because you're also still so young. So like yeah. in your entrepreneurial journey, like you're taking advantage of so many things. Mm. It's it's weird for me to say this, but if let's say you can go back to when you're eighteen, right? <laughs> like it's not that long ago. Yo, but like you you obviously were not the same person then. You've learned so much in this time. What's like that one piece of advice you're you're giving back to like try to grow faster? If I was talking to my eighteen year old self, you know, obviously. I was playing basketball, tried out, didn't make the team. <laughs> At the time, I was like, fuck, what do I do now? Barbering? That's a good one, bro. It's tough because there's probably so many things, right? Because, like, everything I did, I just enjoyed it. But, like, grade 10 year, I wasn't that good at basketball. I wasn't that good at basketball. I was benched, you know. Um, I didn't make the senior team. And then every day from the juniors until I became um, grade 11. Right. Every day I was in the gym, 6 a.m., bro. You know? Trying to get And better. then and then grade 11, grade 12, I became like most improved and then MVP. Damn, okay. So, you know, those rewards happened because of the work I did. So that that concept alone, I think, I learned it now. Like, obviously, I understand that whole concept, but that's the biggest, that's the biggest thing I would tell myself is like, each reward you want, you know, the goals you have, it comes with a certain type of work. Yeah. If you can correlate them and, you know, like with me right now, I, I know I know where I need to be and I know how much work it needs to take. So that's if you understand that concept, that's the biggest thing. I, I like that. It, it's, it's simply put too, right? Like yeah. you want to achieve something. <laughs> it know, comes with this. Put in the work, man. Put yeah. the time in, you know, to to, to get better. We talked about a lot of different things. You've, you've, yeah. you're, you're doing a lot of cool <laughs> stuff. But all, all within barbering, right? Mm -hmm. Doing a lot of cool stuff. I can't wait to see where you're going to be in a couple of years from now. If, if if someone's watching this, maybe they're a young barber, maybe they're someone who knows you or is, or is working with you right now, they want to open a shop one day. Like, what is that piece of advice that you can give to someone? Let's, we'll do a couple, I'll break this down a couple different ways. Let's just start with the basic piece of advice. To anyone that's coming up, maybe they're cutting right now in their, you know, in, in their mom's basement or whatever. Like, what's the piece of advice for them to get from where you started, where they are now to Ooh. a shop? Yeah, because there's so many different routes, right? Yep. I always ask um, barbers why why they want to open a shop, right? Because they can go to the route of the studio. A lot of barbers are doing that nowadays. They just pay like a sh like a cheap rent. Right. They keep all the money, but like there's only room for a few barbers. That's actually perfect for what they want, right? Like, oh, you just make your money. It's like a job almost, right? Um, you're buying a job, but. Not everyone wants to actually be a barbershop owner, right? So yeah, it's just a matter of knowing what you want. It's, it's still self awareness. I think that's the goal for anything, mm -hmm. not just not just not just entrepreneur. It's like, what is it that you want? Are you okay with just with that much? If you if you can truly say yes, you know you're not wired to be you know like one of the best, one of this, the biggest person. Go ahead, bro. There's literally nothing wrong with that. Nothing, yeah. And and not everyone can become. The Elon Musk. No, <laughs> if everyone was possible. Elon Musk, the world wouldn't That's not how it go works. around, bro. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't. So you know, you really have to ask yourself: Are you wired? Are you wired like that? Do you want to You want to build big shit? If you if you can't say yes, maybe that route of studios, the route for you. Nothing wrong with it, bro. Yeah, I respect them. Like, bro, you know, you're providing for yourself. You're providing for the lifestyle you want. Exactly. Maybe down the maybe down the road it'll hit. Like, oh, I need I need more than this, mm -hmm. and. I don't know. For me, it was always go big or go home. <laughs> I like, I like that's coming, coming from coming coming from Philippines. I went I went there like um, the other year. I'm literally looking at the people I grew up with. Literally, my classmates, my friends. The highest job they could have gotten in my in my village was become like a farmer. Most of the people that I grew up with, they're farmers. The yeah. fact that my parents brought me here, you know, the highest thing I could get is way higher than the farmer. It's like. I have this opportunity. Why not just take it? Fuck it. Yeah. Go for it. I love that mindset, bro. And you got so, to yeah. take advantage. Like I said, you're blessed. Yeah. Then if people don't understand, right? Your parents, all of our parents were immigrants, came so, here with nothing. Yeah. Gave us the opportunity. Like, why would we just like not utilize it? You know? Yeah. But same it, thing goes for you, bro. Like, yeah, it's, it's the same. Yo, it's you're like, going 
going for like <laughs> yeah, more than gold, bro. Yeah, more for, for the... like diamond, bro. Yeah. <laughs> what What about a couple tips? Maybe maybe two, three oh, tips. Oh, actual like tactical tips? Two, three tips. Yeah, tactical tips. Okay, That'd be yeah. great. Invest in a coach. I've, I've taken all the <laughs> all the barber courses there is available. I'm in Josh OP's. I pay like 700 a month for it. Obviously, some people will look at that and be like, you're stupid. Right. You know, <laughs> um, but take a look at someone in the industry that you can connect with the most and whatever they have, look at it. Is that something you want? If if you can say yes, buy their course. The fact that they have a course is is like, that's blessed. Imagine if back then, if like Elon Musk and stuff came up with the course, how to become them. Like anyone would, t- would take that. Everyone would have bought it. <laughs> Today's time is literally like the best time because there's online courses now. And like even Steph Curry has a course on oh, how do you shoot like Steph Curry? Yeah, masterclass. Bro, imagine if Michael Jordan had that back then, right? Everyone. Everyone's buying Bro, them. Even I, if you don't play basketball, yeah. you're buying them. Bro, <laughs> so the time we're in is actually like one of the best times. You can take someone that you look up to and just buy their courts takes money bro just invest another tip would be well i guess that that tactical tip is just invest in yourself yeah another one would be content like i wouldn't be Agreed. i wouldn't have met the people i've met if i didn't make the content even like harj harj yeah, gave yeah. me a text the other week it's like bro i'm here in toronto i got a haircut from this barber just random barber and then i said edmonton and they said your name right away it's like if i if i didn't make content you know i wouldn't have those connections anywhere bro exactly like it's just way more opportunities just because i took the time to make content to just put it out there and that costed me zero dollars yeah like you could use it with you could make content with your phone so yeah make content and invest in yourself is the biggest things you can do right now with best return on what you're your investment, I think. I love it. I always tell people like content creates luck. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> if you're not creating content, bro, no opportunities are going to come to you yeah. in a sense, right? But now you got people, I'm sure there's other countries and cities that are seeing your stuff Yo, too. And I have too, I right? have barbers applying to my shop from Philippines, from everywhere. See, that's what I'm saying, bro. That, yeah, that's, that's all that's, content. That's actually crazy though. That's, yeah. that's impactful. Yeah. You know, to show that you're kind of like one of those guys like leading that space and, and eventually as you keep growing and building, it's- They could have applied to a thousand different barbershops in Canada. Right. He said, I want to go to Canada. I'm going to apply to this guy. I asked him too, how many, I don't know if he's capping, but how many did you apply for? I said, only you. I'm like, what? Why me, bro? You know, that's crazy. That's Why crazy. me? There's a thousand different barbershops. Why me? You built that connection with people, man. It's like through your content, they see you, they yeah. they want to come, you know, be a part of that journey and work with you. So man, look, I appreciate it. Yeah. I want to do hopefully another one of this in two, three years from now Oh, to kind of like be able to look back on this and see like, you know, where, what did you do? You know, yeah. how far did you come? Where did you expand? Is there seven barber shops by then? <laughs> who knows, right? There's so many things that could happen and, you know, things change so fast. Technology, they say technology changes mm-hmm. and like, who knows what tomorrow is going to come and or bro. what shakes up the barber industry, right? That's true. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, bro. And uh, thanks for having me, bro. Before before I go, obviously, we can have your handles up. Let people know where to follow you and where to pull yeah. up in Edmonton for a cut. Yeah. So if you're Southside Edmonton, brand new barbershop, we just talked about driving barbershop. Um, it's just after White Mud if you're going north on yep. the right side. There's parking. You can come in. Since you stayed till the end, bro, you're getting a free car wash. On me, just say the Sheesh. word Navin's podcast. You get a free car wash. Yo, okay, now we need to see who's going to pull I'm not, not going <laughs> to tell yo. anyone. I'm not going to tell anyone yo, either, no, but it's just yeah. see. But if someone yeah. pulls up, you got to let me know. Yeah, Navin's podcast. Say the words, you get a free car wash. <laughs> that's that's legit, yo. Hopefully someone's going to get it, man. <laughs> yo, if no one... If, if no one, one I'm, I'm going to uh, tell Ambika or someone just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's the offer, bro. No, I appreciate um, you, bro. I'm like I said, looking forward to the journey and seeing what you go next and... uh just keep doing it, man. Because like I said, to to go back and see like you're only 24 and doing this is like, it's, it's, it's inspiring for me, man. Just like I said, put people around, be, you know, be a part of that circle and see what people yeah. are doing. And it's like a different industry, you know? So it's, it's yeah. nice to pick your brain too. Yeah, appreciate that. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> Peace.